Airbus has revealed the A321 MPA Maritime Patrol, an anti-submarine warfare aircraft at the Euro Naval 2024 Expo. Uh, of course, this is based on the A321 XLR commercial airliner, uh, but was developed for the French Navy, their uh, Patmar Future program, which aims to replace the aging Dassault Atlantic uh, II fleet by 2035. So, this is a long-term, uh, long-term vision here. But competing with the SOS Falcon 10X, the A321 MPA offers a larger payload capacity for some comparison, uh, internal weapons bays, advanced sensor integration, uh, Thale sensors, conformal radar arrays, and a tail-mounted magnetic anomaly detector, also known as MAD, <laughs> designed for maximum detection capability. Sounds like they're lowering costs, limiting modifications, and leveraging experience from its A330 MRTT tanker program. But here's the thing. Boasts an impressive 4,700 nautical mile range, which is massive. Uh, larger size might be a drawback against the smaller, cheaper Falcon 10X. So we'll, we'll see. I mean, decision time is coming. Uh, it sounds like they're set to choose between Airbus and those proposals soon, but I don't know if there's a deadline on that, right? So yeah. The, the Go, go I was going to say, while Airbus is rolling out this A321 MPA, uh, is France going to bite or going to opt for Dassault's sleeker Falcon 10X? The, the, the or, number one challenge for this one immediately is, is differentiation. You've got hmm. to show clearly how you're better, how you differentiate us, so, and then they've got to secure the MOD approval. So that's their biggest challenge. I mean, proving why that 321 can win over the Falcon 10X and stay relevant versus that well-established Poseidon. It's it's not just about waiting for the French MOD's decision. It's making it the case that it's so strong that they have no other choice but to go with them. So yeah. no is not an option. So you're saying that they're hoping that the mod is mad, that, that the yeah. MOD picks the MAD tail mounted. It was, okay. I've got to fit those in here every once in a while just it's to great. make Andrew <laughs> look at me like that. But so... This, the, the A321 MPA has been developed to meet the French military requirements, right? But they also said that exports are possible. We know that Airbus has been developing this for, uh, was an 18th month study um, from that was awarded from the French DGA. Yep. So Airbus has received one of the two contracts, one, the other one was given to Dassault. So now we've got two, you know, as, as we just mentioned, decision times looming. And of course, both of these companies are hoping that they're, that they're the one that's selected. So what happens, and you're right, in order to win that contract, you've got to stand out. You've got to do all the things that Andrew just said. But I think you also have to think about what happens if you don't win, because you put a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of energy, a lot of money into this. So, you know, the study's finished. You're now waiting on a decision from the French Ministry of Defense. If they take it, fantastic. But if they don't, well, you can start looking at marketing, market share, other use cases as well. You don't want to just see this thing go to waste, right? Mm -hmm. That's true. But I'll still stick with it. Do it or die. You know, Airbus, they, they can't just hope the MOD picks them. They, they, they really need to prove the tech and the operational value is unrivaled. Um, you know, they've got Dassault breathing down their necks and they've got that Poseidon already dominating the landscape. So positioning it as a make or break, that's that's what's got to be their core focus rather than a backup plan. So you've already, you know, trying to get that decision. One wins, the other doesn't. So what do you do to... Uh, help yourself then get selected because you, you can't redesign designs already done you know what can you do to increase that chance of being selected then well i think you're right design's already done but i think it's ongoing anyway isn't it because things are going to keep changing and they have to keep real time so i think yeah they go back to that requirements gathering and traceability um they've got to make sure that those those requirements have been documented um, from French MOD and make sure they're aligned with obviously the 321 features and presumably they've done that, but it's going to keep changing. I think um, you know it's a pretty agile environment. They're working in the landscapes changing constantly, so I think design and change stays live. Um, they've got to in keep integrating that feedback loop. Um, from the 18-month study and thereafter. They've got to have their simulation running, so simulate mission scenarios where that 321 larger payload and advanced sensors can outperform all competitors. 
and then make sure that their manufacturing and operations um, are fully ready to go so they can deploy on time, on schedule, in budget. Well, mm -hmm. I think what you're talking about with that continuous uh, like kind of feedback loops and integration is probably a good place for also looking at maybe AI benchmarking. Yeah, that's. I think your AI comes in, you're right, on the front end. So it's making sure that that, that AI is constantly looking at competitors, pulling that back in, scouring the the documentation that's out there to make sure they maintain that competitiveness. You're right, not just human requirements gathering. Um, and then you've got even proposal optimization you can use it for. So using NLP to tailor proposals with language that's going to match MOD priorities because they're going to be issuing huge documents that you've got to comply with. And then um, enhanced simulation models as well using AI. So a lot they can do with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just because you guys are agreeing so much, I was going to ask for each of you to pick pick one of those if you were the Minister of Defense, but I'm not going to do that. Don't worry, I won't put you on the spot like that. <laughs>